How's it going, you guys? So I'm going to make a quick video talking about focus. So first of all, what is focus? So focus essentially is taking your mind's eye and concentrating all of its energy on one single thing, okay? Think of your mind's eye like a light. And let's say you're in a room, okay? You're shining your light all over the room when you're, when you're unfocused, okay? Your mind is all over the room. Focusing is looking at one spot on the wall and taking all of that light that's all over the room and concentrating all that light, tunneling all that light, shining all of that light into that one little spot for as long as you can. That is what focus is. That light is energy. It's all about like everything. Your thoughts are on that, are on that one thing. Your feelings are on that one thing. Your mental pictures that are in your head, your visualization are on that one thing. Your pain is on that one thing. Your stress is on that one thing. It's okay to feel stress and pain when you're trying to focus. As long as it's on that one thing and not something else. If, if you're in martial arts class, for example, and you're stressing over your girlfriend, that pain and stress is in the wrong place. And of course, there's no such thing as good or bad, te well, technically, existentially speaking. So if you want to cry about your girlfriend when you're in martial arts class, that's great. But <laughs> the thing is, your martial arts class is going to be a waste of time if you're thinking about other things. The thing is, the quality of your life depends entirely on the quality and quantity of your focus. Okay? So every single thing in your life if you allow scatterbrained, unfocused, unconcentrated energy, you're gonna get nothing out of anything, okay? Every single f moment of your life that you allow your brain to wander off somewhere else, like, you know, unless of course you're out here walking in the forest, right? If you're at, um, if you're in, in school, and your mind is elsewhere while your teacher is lecturing you, you're wasting that time right there. Um, that time, you could be actually obtaining as much information from your instructor as possible. And then that, what's that gonna do? That's going to improve your, your, your exam scores and your tests. It's gonna improve your life. So, Literally everything in your life is focus. I thought about this. I've been reflecting on this a lot today because I've been in an autopilot haze of unfocusedness. And essentially, every single thing in your life, everything you're experiencing is focus. It's your perception. Because when you're concentrating that light on that one area of the room, on that one spot on the wall, the rest of the room isn't even visible anymore. Everything else in the room is gone. Because it's all in the darkness. When you walk into a room and it's pitch black, you can't see anything, right? You can't see anything. But when you, shine, when you turn the light on, you see everything, okay? But in your head, you don't want to see everything at once. You want to take, all, take that light in the room and you want to tunnel it down to that one spot on the wall. Remember, if there's all these things in your head that, that you don't want to think about, that you don't like, like first of all, so a lot of things need that light shined on them. Like people have unresolved uh, mental issues, right? Trial of trauma and stuff like that. It has to be resolved one way or another. Uh, problems in the world and politics and stuff like that, of course, you've got to address that. If you have an underlying health issue, you've got to address that. You can't deny it. Now, how you address that is going to be dictated by your focus, of course. The better your focus is, and the, be the better the quantity and the quality of your focus, the better the outcome on whatever it is you're focusing on, okay? But no, your health problem is never going to get solved if you don't focus on it exclusively, okay? 
But anyway, anyway, what I'm saying is people a lot of times allow their mind to wander. They allow themselves to dwell on things that aren't actually going to benefit them. Things that are actually taking them into greater pain and suffering and taking them away from ever finding a solution. I've had lots of friends over, the, over my life and myself included many times. I think everyone has this moments like these where we allow our mind to wander and dwell and pass the point of productivity. Like you have to actually dwell on your problems or let your mind be scatterbrained for a while sometimes in order to come up with new ideas and new solutions or to address problems you have. And that's, uh, there is something called, um, there is like a reflective meditation that you can do where you sit down and you let your mind wander and you just see what's there without attachment. And that's really good for like if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, but you don't know exactly what the real problem is, reflective meditation can help with that. Letting your brain be scattered, letting your brain be like wander. But if you're like that all the time, then you're constantly going to be walking through life, letting your mind go wherever it wants. And that's not ever good, okay? So there is, there's, there's guiding your thoughts or letting your thoughts be guided by external circumstances, okay? This is all about focus versus autopilot. So autopilot is, so obviously being unscattered is one thing, or sorry, being scattered, being unfocused is one thing, but being on autopilot mode is the big thing, the worst thing. So focus and autopilot are to complete a uh, two opposite sides of the coin. So autopilot, I believe is the big culprit here, especially these days. There's many, many, many different culprits here that are ruining people's focus. But I think the big thing is number one is mostly just autopilot, mostly autopilot. People just let their brain go wherever the fuck. Okay. And so one of the most important things for you to do to cultivate focus again, it's not meditation. Like meditation is great. Yes. But that's not even, that's not the biggest thing. Okay. Um, discipline, uh, having a to-do list, all these things are great. But I think the main thing, at least in my life and most people watching this is autopilot behaviors of all kinds. So I made plenty of videos about, oh, like, you know, uh, no fat, you know, pornography is bad for you, right? And then I realized, oh shit, it's not actually porn that's the underlying problem. It's novelty. It's dopamine seeking behavior, the dopamine loop. Research that, by the way. Research that. That's something I was watching before I went to sleep, and that's probably why I'm thinking about this now. The dopamine loop is where you start a behavior that you expect to get a reward from, and you're seeking that reward, but then for some reason, whatever behavior you're doing never gives you that reward. And so it's a loop of like seeking and the reward, the seeking is actually rewarding you and it's spiking dopamine with no reward and the reward will give you fulfillment. For example, if you go out and let's say you eat some food, right? Seeking the food is a dopamine. Then when you get the food and if it nourishes you, if it's whole nourishing foods, it's going to produce serotonin and feelings of endorphins and fulfillment. And then you're not going to seek anymore because you feel satisfied. But the problem with refined foods these days is that it spikes your dopamine in an unnatural way or spikes your, your body in an un unnatural way where you're constantly craving it and never feeling satisfied, never feeling nourished. And so people are constantly eating and eating and eating and seeking that stimulus and never getting the fulfillment, okay, never getting the serotonin. So all autopilot behaviors work this way, okay? A really basic one is Facebook. There's two different reasons why Facebook does this. The first one is um, the Facebook news feed. It's the less talked about of, of most of these. Most, most people talk about validation and the notification part of it. Yes, that is a huge thing, is that you're constantly looking at your phone to see if like you got any likes on your pictures or comments. 
it, see if uh, you got any external validation. That's, that is true, but everyone knows about that. But the big one is when you're on the Facebook news feed and you're constantly scrolling. And the thing is, this is actually worse than seeking notifications and shit like that. Checking your phone to see if somebody validated you through comments or whatever. This is even worse because it's more addictive. Because you're not actually like, oh, checking your phone every now and then to see if you got notifications. Now you're actually on the Facebook app and you're scrolling. And what, what's happening is your brain is actually looking for new... Uh, something new, a new stimulus, a new new dopamine spike over and over again. And you're never getting any kind of knowledge or any kind of productivity from it, so it doesn't fulfill you, doesn't satisfy you, doesn't give you relief, doesn't give you serotonin or endorphins. It's this constant dopamine loop, okay? And this is what drives that autopilot behavior because focus, focus... The main benefit you get from, from cultivating focus and removing autopilot is satisfaction, it's fulfillment, it's endorphins, it's serotonin, it's that dopamine seeking, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that causes you to seek. Eventually you, you, you get that reward that your dopamine is, is guiding you towards, you get the serotonin, you get the achievement, right? You're seeking that job. You're, you're trying as hard as you can to get that job, okay? And it's stressful and painful, but that dopamine keeps you going. And you finally get the job, you get the serotonin, you get the relief, you get the endorphins, you get the fulfillment, you get the achievement, the long-term gratification. That's focus. That's real focus, okay? Concentrating your energy and your efforts on that long-term goal. Facebook, on the other hand, it's dopamine. It's dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. It's, uh, you know, your ex-girlfriend posting a picture of her dog or something, <laughs> her new dog, or her new boyfriend, and your, and your mom posting a picture of her new car, and uh, your, your best friend complaining about why their life sucks. And every five seconds, there's a new story, a new story, a new story. You can sit there scrolling for fucking hours until your whole life has passed you by. And when you come back to your senses in reality, you realize, oh shit, I feel like, I feel like it's only been five minutes, but it's been five hours. The same thing happens if you get on dating apps like Tinder or pornography or even scrolling through YouTube or even reading articles these days because there's those clickable links and there's always new articles, new articles, new fucking articles in the middle of the first paragraph of the first article you want to re read in the first place before you know it you've got 20 different windows open from the clickable links in that one article and you haven't even read the first fucking paragraph so this is dopamine and this is the number one enemy of focus is autopilot behavior and these the dopamine loop okay because dopamine is what's going to it's it's what dictates your focus, your prolonged focus, your short-term focus, short-term gratification, long-term gratification. This is how it all is. And so for me personally, when I find myself going days, sometimes weeks, of indulging in autopilot unconscious behavior, I find that, number one, I get extremely depressed um, no matter what I do. Number two, I can't focus worth a damn. I'll be in the middle of jujitsu training and I'll be like thinking about all this other stuff outside in my life. And I'm like, and then my instructor is like telling me something and it's like, it's there in the background, but like my brain is entertaining a different movie. Okay. And this is, this is like me being distracted because Facebook Facebook teaches your brain to be unfocused. It teaches your brain to be like focusing new, something new every five seconds. Something new every five seconds. Okay? I notice I can't even play video games anymore because I can't figure out what I want to play. I'm like, oh, I want to play this. And I might, I, might, I might put the disc in. And I'm like, oh, no, I got to play something else. I can't even enjoy them. And I, fi and I find 
the longer I go without being on my cell phone, really, other than like important things like talking to clients and stuff like that, um, like the more enjoyment I get out of little things in life, like even just looking at nature. And I feel like ADHD and, um, you know, social issues and things like that, a lot of them come from this autopilot phone usage, right? So anyway, when you get yourself to stop the autopilot behavior, right? When you remove autopilot behavior, well, now you're stuck with the other, some other problems. So when you remove autopilot behavior, now your brain's blank. Well, it's not going to be blank, but now you don't have that artificial uh, drug anymore. That's what, that's what it is. You don't have that stimulation anymore, right? And you have all these people who do these dopamine fasts where they just take it to another level. They don't eat food. They don't drink coffee. They don't play video games. They just like sit in their room all day and maybe go to work or something. And I think that's extreme. I think a lot of people need that, right? I think the main reason why so many people struggle with porn addiction is that they don't, is that the real addiction is autopilot unconscious behavior. So they remove porn, but they stay on, but they stay with the Facebook and they stay with all that. And they relapse, they relapse. Well, I notice this loop. I notice this trigger. I notice it's actually uh, Facebook that triggers relapse for me, which is really crazy, right? Because it's not a sex addiction. It's, I mean, it's, it's mixed when it comes to pornography and Tinder too. Tinder's even worse because it's real life. But it's not a sex addiction or even a porn addiction. It's an autopilot artificial stimulation addiction and so that's why people keep struggling with that right and so anyway when you come out of that and this is another thing when people come out of the porn addiction they relapse because they have nothing there to fill that space that they now created when you remove autopilot behavior from your life you might drive yourself fucking crazy realizing so before before you had that light, right? A focus. That light was all over the place with Facebook and whatnot. So scattered. But now you just have a dark room. Now you have a dark room. When you remove that scatterbrain nonsense, when you remove all autopilot behavior, now you have a fucking dark room, okay? And this is what freaks people out. And this is exactly why people do autopilot behavior in the first place. You have a dark room, a blink room, a dark room. It's not a blink room, it's a dark room full of infinite possibility. Now, you've gotta take that fucking light and you gotta shine it on the spot on the wall that you really want to bloom and come to fruition in your life, put it that way. Part of the struggle is shit, like, why the fuck would I want to focus on anything, right? Like, I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, let's say we're all going to die one day. So why do I even do anything in life? Now, that's a hard place to come from. This video is not going to address that because I don't even know. Um, not fully yet. Not fully. I have an idea, right? I want to help people, yada, yada. But um, why am I even going to do anything, Okay. <laughs> But you got to figure out, you got to have a vision for yourself. You got to figure out what kind of movie do I want to create? Because literally, like, the one thing you can say is your entire life is your focus, whatever you're focused on. And you're creating a movie. It's like the mental pictures you have in your head. Like, even your memories of what your life was, you know, is what you're thinking about right now, what you're focusing on right now. So you're literally creating your own movie. You're creating, like, a... A vivid dream of some kind, a lucid dream. You know, like make a meal. And so you want to figure out what kind of dream do I want to create? What kind of movie do I want to create for myself? And become that actor. And whatever you choose to sh shine your light on, focus your light on, whatever little dot in the room, you want that little dot that the light to be shined on, you start shining your, your light on that. You start to focus on that. You start to grow that. That little dot will eventually fill the entire room. Before you know it, you know, that scatter brain light that you used to have has now completely replaced itself with an amazing, fulfilling life full of amazing things. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. 
about everything in this video. I'll talk to you guys next time.